Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am the Sam, the beans bouncing around in the background as usual, so you'll definitely hear him today. And we are building a style today that I first knew as Northwest Suburban, but the more I look into it, the more the lines between different suburban styles are blurring, and I think every website just has a different idea as to what each suburban subtype is. So I've done my best on my Pinterest board to start breaking them up into the ways that make sense to me. But if any of you know where the definitive guide to suburban subtypes is, please send me a link. We'll be building four bedrooms upstairs, one bedroom downstairs for a total of five bedrooms on a 20 by 30 lot with a fairly decent backyard still. So overall, pretty compact build today. For the sake of argument, I'm going to call this specific subtype rustic traditional uh, due to the use of stone and wood and all of those things. Let's look at some pictures and talk about this home style. So what exactly are we building today? A two-story family home with ranch and craftsman roots and just enough rustic detail to keep it interesting. Details I want to focus on today include a full two-story shell as opposed to one and a half stories as is most common with craftsman influenced homes, with a multi-dimensional facade, front-facing mid to high pitch gable roof pieces, horizontal siding with brick or stone details, a covered front porch, lots of mid to large multi-pane windows, family-focused open floor plan, and a good backyard. Don't worry if any of that sounds confusing, I will explain it in much more detail as we go along. I do have a collection of homes that fit these criteria on the Pinterest board as always, and I hope you don't let my apparent disorganization today scare you away. Usually I have loads of fun facts, but unfortunately I have yet to find any good way to truly break down and distinguish assorted suburban style subtypes. On the plus side, that leaves more room to be creative. I will be using just the base game today. I know a lot of builders get asked why they do or don't use packs, and since we have cool houses on the screen, I figure I'll just share my reasoning now. The main thing is we have a lot of new players coming into the family right now, and there's so much you can do with just the base game. So if I don't really need a pack to carry out a style correctly, or if I wouldn't be able to get the style done any better with a pack as opposed to using just the base game, why not just keep it simple? And secondly, I am not going anywhere, and I am sure that I will revisit these styles with much more detail and knowledge and more detailed packs possible possibly custom content, who knows, in the future years. Speaking of, I do want to talk about scheduling later in the video, but for now, let's get building. I'm going to be building on a 20 by 30 lot today. The specific lot is Riverside Roost, which is in Willow Creek. And I still don't know how to get rid of this shiny thing. I swear I've tried everything. If you guys have figured it out, please let me know. So I'm gonna use the custom room tool and I'm gonna walk you through the outline of the whole building. So I'm gonna start with four tiles and I'm gonna go back 10 and to the left six. And off the back here will be our living room. So we're going to go back four to the left five toward the main build four again to the left three down eight to the right seven. And you're going to do a little connecting like this. If you follow it along, it should be costing you 3,360 simoleons. There we go. Now from here, I'm going to add a little wall right here. That's going to sort of section off this as an entry space and keep it a little bit more separate from the dining room over here. One tile away on this side, I'm going to draw a wall that is five tiles long. We're going to do a little family bathroom, probably like a half bathroom, or if you have laundry day, putting laundry in this room would be great as well. I'm going to draw an L right here so that the living room is a full on rectangle. And then placing another wall right here, we have a four by seven main bedroom with a nice large ensuite. Of course, if you wanted more bedroom, less bathroom, you could adjust this wall that way. And you can pull this room out in this direction or even away from the build a bit if you wanted to. This is just the size we're going to start with. Your stairs will place right here. I'm supposed to be using short wall height. There we go, that didn't look right. So stairs will go right here. And for the upstairs, let's just start in the same spot. We'll go over four, back 10. And we're pretty much going to trace out this whole side to match up, but over here will be a bit different. So here we're going to go out one like this, and you can just draw a little square here. Then we're going to go in one, make another little square coming out to the side, down two, right one, down one, draw over three. We're going to make a little divot here before we line up with the rest of the walls. Now, what's with all of these funky lines over here? This is going to let us have sort of a dormer effect with this section right here. And this is going to be under a roof by adding these little tiles here. We are going to end up getting more windows in this bedroom. I do have this whole area divided up into four bedrooms. So if you also want four bedrooms, this is how I would do it. First section off this room right here. So that will be a rectangle. And we're going to add another room right here and another one coming down right here. So these are all rectangles. This one lines up with this wall right here. This one is two away from the stairs, so you have a nice wide hallway. This just takes up this area right here. This bedroom, I'm going to line up with the edge of the stairs, and I'm going to draw a line straight across right here to make a bathroom. So four bedrooms. This is going to be a full bathroom with a tub and shower and everything, and I added this square to be a half bath. Of course, you'd expand one or the other of these bedrooms into that space, but this home could very easily fit eight sims, and you need all the bathrooms you can get, especially if you're trying to get everyone up and out to school at the same time. So that's why I added the half bath there. 
Now we're going to add a couple of decks. This 3x3 three three square is going to start two tiles in from the left of your house, so right here, and then just pull it over till it meets up, pull it over till it meets up, and that's done. And I'm going to add a deck off the back here as well. Now you can select your house and use this double-sided arrow in the middle. It'll show up in any room that you click on to bring it up about three. You wanna go up two to four, I like three the best. And this doesn't look like much, but here's what we do have. When I was talking about that sort of um, multi-dimensional facade, I mean where it steps out in multiple places. This is a fairly small home, so we only have a couple of places bumping out. We only have one dormer over here, but um, in a much larger suburban style home, you're going to see many more of those. Now before we move on to the roof, I will warn you this is going to be a lot of pieces, but we are only adjusting the pitch on one piece, and I think we are using maybe one key on our keyboard to adjust some of the eaves, so overall it's fairly simple roof to put together, it's just a lot of pieces. We can start right over here on this side with our half gable roof. With the default pitch, if you page down, you can see it looks like it's clipping into the room, however, during gameplay you shouldn't see it. And if you do, you can bring this over and hold shift to pull in one eave at a time. We'll place the exact same roof piece on this side, and on this little piece right here, we can just take that gable roof piece and scale it down. And because we're using the short wall height and the default roof pitch, the math works out so that we don't actually have to adjust anything. Everything just lines up perfectly. Next, I'm going to take a half-hipped roof piece and I'm going to line up so that the hipped side is over on this side of the build. Bring each one of these eaves out one because by default, this roof this roof places with none. Um, and we're going to use this to cover the largest possible portion of our roof, which is this right here. From here, it's all gables. So you can place one right there, one right here, but of course make sure you resize it so that it fits in with the rest of the roof. One right there, and one last gable on the back here. The last roof piece we need to worry about is the cover for our deck here, which is going to be another half gable piece. We'll rotate it so that the water will of course run away from the house. Bring it to size to cover the deck, and pitch it down all the way, and then back up one. I'll grab this arrow right here and pull it back into the house to cover up that gap right there. And there's your roof! I think now that the roof is on, you can probably see that suburban style pulling through a little bit more clearly. Um, sometimes it's hard to see with just the random white boxes, but we have this sort of dormer piece here. We have the multi sort of stepped facade over on this side, and we do have not the most beautiful back of the build, of course, but that's pretty standard. If you wanted to make it more beautiful and elegant, you could consider adding some additional spaces like we did here, where it has like a main rectangle and then another one coming out of it. Uh, but for the most part, this is going to serve you really well. Again, I am just using the base game for this build, but there are so many ways that you can really bring out different styles of different regions by using their packs just on this exact same shell, and I'll go more into that um, toward the end of the video. For now, we're just sticking with base game, and you're going to want to stick with some sort of horizontal siding. Vertical is going to make it read as a farmhouse, so if you want a farmhouse, go vertical if you are ready to wait for that video and you just want to stick with the more traditional rustic style um, that we're going for today go with some horizontal siding. Blue is of course a classic. Red is one of my favorites. And yellow can look good or not depending on the lot. This is a pretty good lot for yellow. You can see the sun really brings that brightness out, um, but other lots it may look a little bit dingy, so just pay attention to that when you're picking your colors. We're also going to be using either brick or stone as an accent. In the end, I'm going to go with stone, but first I want to talk to you about the brick. I have to go find bubbles first. If you saw this TikTok or this short, then I mentioned briefly using some of the half brick wall patterns, but I didn't really have time to go into it too much, so I want to talk about that here real quick. Basically, in the base game, there are two different siding options. You have the clapboard crush, which is the wider siding, and the simple siding, which is the more narrow siding. Now, in each of those siding styles, you also have the option to grab some with columns that place on the corners, like this. You have some that have half brick with columns, half brick with no columns, and the bricks themselves, you have red, red with white grout, and gray. I said that in the wrong order, um, but that's where they are. And same thing for the more narrow siding as well. Also worth mentioning is these bricks actually match up with the brickery, which also has trim or no trim. There are also all those same swatches, just like that. And this also lines up with the foundation. So we have the decent exposure, ton of bricks, which is just the uh, white grouted swatch and the gray swatch is the mixed identity foundation. So if you're looking to get your bricks and siding to all match and look awesome together, those are your options. That's how you use them. However, I'm using stone today. And for stone to get the same effect, pretty much your only option is the there for you foundation in the base game anyway. And the matching swatch is right here, the mega stacked stone. So you can see that lines up. I mean, it doesn't line up perfectly, but 
Um, it is the same stone, so it'll make your build look that just that much more cohesive. When you are coloring with the stone or brick or whatever you decide to use for your accent, I recommend only choosing options where you're not going to have a wall that ends up like this, where you have one side of the corner painted and one side not. Because of where this lines up, it's all inside corners, so it makes a natural division, and the roof lines up so that you can't see the other side of the roof, and this part of the roof isn't meeting up with, say, just some siding like this. Now you can make that look good if you wanted to, just grab the square roof trim and place it at the bottom of the roof. So you can do that, but if you're just looking for some more natural looking division of the stone, that's how I would do it. Just making sure that it intersects on inside corners, or if you are intersecting on an outside corner, be able to add a column or something like that. I think this is how I am painting mine. Next up, since we're here, let's talk about the roof trims. Because the Suburban style is so incredibly widespread, you can pick whatever you want. But my number one recommendation is don't go with default. I like using something a little bit thicker on my uh, suburban homes just because it reminds me of gutters, which we do not have in the game, but I wish we did. Uh, we do have downspouts, but that's in a pack. Anyway, um, so this is the one that I tend to like to use, or the beveled out roof trim, which is just similar size line, just a little bit softer. And of course you don't have to use white, you could go for brown as well, especially if you're leaning more in the craftsman direction. For shingles, again, anything but default, going with something more metal will lend you some of those uh, farmhouse vibes. Um, you could potentially use this in a more craftsman direction as well. The scalloped shingles will look a little bit more storybook. Or you could just go for the normal house approach of normal shingles. I don't know if I can call this a pro tip because I'm not a professional, but if you really, really want your build to feel cohesive, one of the best ways to do that is make sure that your roof trim and the casings of all of your windows and doors all match. If you're using a foundation that has a trim around it, like one of these, it's best to make sure that that matches as well. And if it's at all possible going with windows that are in the same sort of collection, extra bonus points. What that's going to do for your build is just make it look like it was a little bit more planned, which is good. So I'm going to be using the classic casement in a dark brown. The short classic casement, also in a dark brown. This one I'll be placing in areas I can have larger windows. This one I'll be placing in areas I can use smaller windows, like above kitchen counters. And all that's going to do is keep everything feeling, you know, like all the materials were picked out at the same time. For the front door, I'm also going to stick with brown. And I'm going to use a one tile door because I'm trying to complete this build without turning on move objects. Because I prefer to do um, the beginner sort of friendly builds that way. So that's how I'm windowing the front. If you want, you can also place windows up in the sort of peaks of the roof. I know that's sort of a personal taste thing. I like it on the larger expanses just because it's so empty. This is where our dining area is going to be. So I'm going to add three windows here and three windows upstairs in that bedroom. On the back here, I'll add two windows right there and two below. This is where I'm going to put the kitchen. That's why I'm using the shorter windows there. Three windows top and bottom right there and two windows for these spaces here. From the inside, here's what that looks like for all of the bedrooms. They all get ample light. The bathroom's got plenty of light coming in. And downstairs, this bathroom still gets a window. Of course, you could add more windows or fewer windows depending on what you're going for. Um, but I would say that this is a pretty standard amount of windows. And to finish up the exterior, I'm just going to put down some decking. I really like uh, this swatch in particular. We got this one fairly recently. I just like how old it looks, but if you don't want your build to look so old, something like this would work just fine. Now for the railing around your deck, again, it depends a lot on the overall style you're going for. Mine's going to be pretty simple, um, kind of more on the rustic craftsman side, but if you wanted to go more for ranch, first of all, you'd want to go with white accents instead of the brown, um, but you could add something a little bit more like this, adds a little bit more country. You could just block the neighbors, whatever seems right. I'm going to pick some stairs and use this exact same stone paint to paint the side of my stairs so that it looks like it's part of the foundation. Railing is optional. I really wish Sims could fall off stairs. I think that would be hilarious. And the last thing to address up front here would be columns. A lot of the columns and a lot of the reference images that I showed you guys had some sort of stone or brick base, like this one from Seasons or this one from Get Famous. These would both be excellent options if you're using those packs. If you're not though, I would recommend sticking with something more simple like the square column. Or if you wanted to feel a little bit more fancy, you could go with something a little bit more like this. It's a touch more Victorian, but it will work, especially from the base game. But I wouldn't go with anything too Greek. That's, that's a different style. Whatever you go with, again, should really match whatever your sort of accent color of the day is. If you're finding that your Sims can't use stairs, by default, the stairs will sort of remove this little railing piece, but it's not technically gone. Um, but if you do find that your Sims can't go up and down the stairs, move your stairs to the side, just manually remove those railing pieces and then put them back. 
that should resolve the issue. Until we come back to landscape, the last thing to add out here would be a sliding glass door. Let's just quickly go over the sort of essentials of the style when it comes to the exterior, and then we'll move inside. Starting from the top down, let's look at our roof. So I'm specifically using a lot of gable pieces here. You may use some hipped roof pieces depending on your reference images, but you're going to have multiple gables facing out, and that sort of translates downward into that uh, multi-dimensional facade here. So we have sort of the base rectangle of the build, but out from that we have this larger section and then the smaller section here as well as a dormer. Um, all of these interdimensional sort of ins and outs really give the suburban that classic suburban feel, and that often includes a small to mid-size covered front porch. Siding, you mostly want to stick with horizontal siding and mix in some stone or brick. Let's move inside. For simplicity's sake, I am just going to use the exact same flooring throughout the whole house. But if you wanted to grab some linoleum or tile for the kitchen and bathrooms, that would totally be acceptable. For walls, again, pretty much anything goes. You're mostly going to see a lot of earth tones and neutral tones, but bright colors aren't unheard of. It all is just going to reflect the personality of your sim. As always, I recommend switching out your stairs to match your floor. And I'm just going to use some basic wooden doors. I'm going to place one here, one here, my bathroom door right here. And then upstairs, I'm going to use this as sort of a hall and place the doors coming off of it like that. We'll have a door here, here, and going into this bathroom as well. That leaves this little corner open for a desk, a bookshelf. If you really wanted to, you could uh, build out a secondary deck here and have a little door right there. That's actually a good idea. I'm just going to copy this deck and place it right here grab some columns for some support. And then you can go into this section of the menu right here, grab exterior trims and some inlaid exterior trim in whatever your sort of floor color is. And now we have a two level deck. I didn't do that in the pre-build, but that works pretty well, so I'm going to leave it. Now right here, you could do a half wall, you could do a full wall, you could do some more railing, but you do wanna block that off for aesthetics. Again, sorrowfully, Sims can't actually fall downstairs. Lil Simsy did a video fairly recently talking about um, her like wish list for the Sims. And if I had a wish list, I would totally, totally put down, I want Sims to fall down the stairs. Cause that's just the lovely kind of person I am. All right, let's talk about the kitchen and dining space real quick here. So pretty much space-wise, you have two options. You can either do a slightly larger kitchen and a two tile table like this, or you can do a slightly smaller kitchen and fit in a larger table like this. So right now my kitchen is dedicated to be three tiles wide. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Grab my fridge, whatever counters feel most reasonable to you. And of course the magic island. Remember, you can click the little gear icons to get specific pieces. So I'm gonna grab this end piece to place at the end there, and I'll put my stove here. The reason I'm putting my stove here so I don't have to worry about the black splash sort of thing on the back of the counter um, carrying over or not. And I could put down some stools. Now this way, we have plenty of space for the dining table. There is a clear division of space right here, and we have room for the bar stools. Now, if we were to expand the kitchen one tile, which would pretty much just look like this, you can see you can still technically fit everything in, but that division of space isn't quite so clear. The dining table doesn't feel like it fits quite as nicely. So if you wanted a slightly larger kitchen, you just want to have a slightly smaller dining table. Something like that. If you have laundry day, right here would be a great place to put a little laundry room, maybe still add a toilet, a nice big sink. But if we're just going with the base game, I'd probably add a shower stall in that little space just because it's super handy. Something like this or use that space for storage. Now in the big bathroom here, we can do some fun things. For starters, this would be a great space for a shower tub combo if you wanted one or just a normal tub and we'll throw it on a toilet real quick. But over here, we can use matching cabinets from the kitchen on either side like this and then use the end pieces to be fancy and do a little like back to back sort of thing, you know, his and hers. A little floating vanity could be nice as well, or you could make it look more built in by doing that. Still lots of space for decorative items. And there is a pretty decent, big, but not too big, no move objects bathroom. For the half bath, I am literally just going to grab a toilet and a sink, nothing too fancy. I don't need anyone washing dishes here. For this bathroom though, I am going to stick a little shower over here in the corner. And with it being the kids' bathroom, I am most definitely going to be doing a little double vanity here. I wish that mirror could fit, I could make it fit, but it would require cheats, which I've already told myself I wouldn't do today. And again, there's still plenty of space for our little toilet, toilet paper, bath towel, whatever. You could forego the double vanity and add a bathtub over here instead. I like it like this though. So the last couple things to do here would of course be landscaping, and I am going to show you some ways to sort of personalize this build to other worlds using their packs, just because I think that's fun. I think it's neat to see what the 
base game can do and just how much of a difference other packs make. But first, I'm going to ask you to like this video if you've been enjoying it, especially if you are building along. Comment any suggestions, corrections, and questions that you may have. Subscribe if you're not already, of course. Turn on the little bell thingy if you enjoy getting notifications. And I think that's it today. So landscaping. I mean, if Suburban is a landscaping style, that's what you can go with or anything else that you like. In general, I recommend taking a look to the world around you and picking out some of those same plants. So for example, we have this hedgerow right here, which is the hedgerow right there. They are different colors. That's because this is technically a debug item and we're not going into that today. But if you want to learn more about debug, I would be more than happy to do a video about that. Over here, let's look at these flowers. I know that those are debug items, but this one is pretty similar. This is the purple perennial flower and you can scale it up and down using your bracket keys. You don't need any cheats for that. And the yellow bush here is the sun rose bush. It's just a default swatch. And again, you can scale that up or down, no big deal. So we can use these and similar plants to make sure that our landscaping really blends into the surroundings, which is really nice. Now these edges in particular aren't going to line up with my build super well unless I try to move objects or do some other sneaky stuff. So I'm going to delete those and I'm just going to use the bulbous bush instead. I can place that over here, grab some of my flowers. Again, I can resize them with those bracket keys, layer in some rocks. You can grab lawn decorations down here in this little bird bath, like a bird bath. And those are the very basics of putting together a, a sort of landscape scene. Other things that can really help are placing items in a total of odd numbers. So right now I have two of these large shrubs. I'm going to want another one, but another good way to mix that up is to use those bracket keys to resize items. So if I just scale this down a little bit, now I have three hedges, but they're also broken up into different sizes. If you pay close attention to even Instagram posts um, of people decorating their homes or whatever, you are going to start noticing that even interior decorating, the exact same general rule of odd numbers um, and different sizes of the same objects is used a lot. You can also grab some trees. These trees are the debug version of the European beech tree. Trees are super great, again, for adding a sort of different sizes, some different height options to your build, whether it's tall or short, it can be nice to just get some additional height on the lot. And if you have any areas that you're not super fond of, like this blank wall right here, you can just put a tree down. You may have to rotate it to make sure that it's not clipping into your house too much, but it's not coming through the wall here, so it's perfect. I'm going to add a couple of these trees to the backyard just for something interesting to do back here. If this is your own build, now would be a great time to fill in the backyard, whether you want a pool or playground equipment or an observatory or whatever. The last little touch that your landscape needs is to rain paint. So go ahead and grab your paint tool. I like to use one of these two sizes of the circle brush and bring it halfway between the middle and the soft side. Grab a dirt that's appropriate to your world. Smarter starter soil is one of my favorites for anywhere that has grass and you're just going to start bringing it around and painting under your plants. You'll want to grab under your trees as well and bring a line under your foundation. Now if your foundation gets a little thick and chunky like that, no worries, you can just bring the circle brush down and try again. A couple other fun things you can do with terrain paint are bring them all the way to the most soft and drag it out from whatever stairs you may have. Uh, that's just going to make it look like a more used sort of path. Or you can layer dirt down, firm up the edge a little bit and grab some pebbles or pavers or whatever else to create sort of a walking path. I like putting the dirt down first because otherwise the pavers just sit kind of awkwardly on the grass and I find that the dirt adds a nice sort of blend. I'll grab a mailbox and a bin and there's a little five bedroom suburban. Obviously not a starter, but a pretty simple build to pull together that looks like you spent a lot more time on it than you actually did. Let's take a quick little tour. First off, landscaping again, I just recommend, especially if you're not sure which direction to go, grabbing some plants from the world around you or ones that look like them is a great direction to go with landscaping. Resize using your bracket keys and don't forget to some terrain paint underneath everything. Coming inside, you'll generally enter into some sort of open living space, at least in the smaller to mid-sized suburban homes. Kitchen and dining are generally open to one another and in this case, the living room is slightly separated, although that's not always the case. It just totally depends on your floor plan. There's usually at least one bedroom on the main floor, but the majority of the bedrooms will be on the second floor and they'll be a pretty decent size. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about scheduling and show you some sort of variations you could do along with which pack all of those items are from. All right, scheduling Sam here. Here's the deal. I did not expect to hit a thousand subscribers until like mid this year, maybe. So just 
the fact that they've we've, we've passed 3,000 now, it just blows my mind. And I know a lot of you are here from shorts, many of you are here from TikTok, and obviously I want to keep posting videos and all of that as much as possible. I can't do daily in a way that would get you guys the content you really deserve right now, um, especially since I am not monetized, I don't have an editor, I have a small child, I have a house to take care of, all those things. So the bean has joined us, so we'll see if he has anything to say about this. So my goal is still to continue posting, posting daily on YouTube. However, I will be breaking that up between full length videos and shorts and community posts and all of that because if I do that, first of all, the full length videos that you guys are going to get are going to be much higher quality than if I was trying to grind out new videos every day, especially since I wasn't able to pre-record much because we all got sick, each one, every one of us got sick at least twice uh, over my posting break. So pretty much no pre-recording happened, so there's that. Secondly, if I break it up like this, not only will the full length videos be better, but you guys are also going to get to see more shorts I will continue to be active on TikTok and there's a better chance that I'll get more articles out on Tumblr. And final exciting reason, I would be able to sort of diversify the content here a little bit more. Doing the month of one thing and then like taking a break was sort of my throwing spaghetti at the wall sort of thing just to see what stuck. Um, and this is sticking pretty well. So with that in mind, I'd love to continue the Build Like a Nerd series, but if I break up how I'm posting, I can also do a couple of spin-off series I've been wanting to do, um, such as Furnishing Like a Nerd and Rebuilding Like a Nerd, while I will look at EA homes and build them how they should be built. I'd also like to take more of your guys' suggestions and that will allow me to do that a little bit better. I could do random challenges that way, we can explore other packs, I'm going to be getting the werewolves pack soon because you guys all voted on that and I'm really looking forward to playing with that. Basically, the long and short of it is, in order to get you guys better content and to make sure that I don't burn out and can actually consistently post here and on TikTok and other places as well, you will not be seeing daily full-length video uploads but I will still do my best to get you guys some form of content every single day and hello and welcome Welcome to all 3,000 plus of you. Back to normal, normal Sam. As always, feel free to leave your questions, suggestions, and corrections in the comments down below. Don't forget to check out all the social links, including the Pinterest board that has this, um, or the home that I based this one on, as well as many other homes and floor plans in it. Thanks so much for building with me today, and I look forward to building with you again very, very soon. Bye!